The Master Sword is the most iconic weapon in the Legend of Zelda series and it's available to get in Tears of the Kingdom. Today I'm going to walk through how to get the Master Sword, plus we've got a few options and I'm going to run through all of them so you can wield the sword that seals the darkness in Tears of the Kingdom. Well, if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all latest Zelda content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. Well, getting the Master Sword is optional in Tears of the Kingdom, but really, does it feel like a proper adventure with Link without it? I don't think so. so. So getting the Master Sword is fairly central to the story as well, given we see the Master Sword decay following the malice attack from Ganondorf's corpse early on in the game. But without further delay, let's look at how to get the Master Sword. So here's a brief rundown of how to get the Master Sword. So first of all, find the Light Dragon in the sky. Second, get on the Light Dragon's back. And then third, you want to pull the Master Sword from its location, and you are going to need two full stamina wheels to get the Master Sword. Okay, first of all, how to find the Master Sword's location. So the Master Sword is flying high above Hyrule embedded in the Light Dragon. And it's moving around constantly. So there are a couple of ways to pinpoint the location of the Light Dragon and they include. So first of all, find the 12 Dragon Tears in various locations around Hyrule. Or you can save the Deku Tree in Korok Forest. Or you could just find the Light Dragon in the sky and jump on its back. Okay, now we're going to go through all the options one by one. So option one, find all the dragon's tears. So the first method will take you on a journey across Hyrule to find all the dragon tier locations. So while this is time consuming, I do like this method because each time you find a dragon's tear, you'll get a memory. And that is a cutscene looking back at Princess Zelda with her time with the ancient king of Hyrule. So you've got 11 glyphs to find a dragon tear each all over Hyrule. And when you found the first 11, then a 12th is going to reveal itself, and then you've got all of the Dragon's Tears. Well, to find the first glyph and get the Dragon's Tears quest, you want to find Impa northwest of Lookout Landing. So you can find Impa at other locations as well. However, this is where I first found her, and this is a good place to meet her when you first jump off the Great Sky Island. Talk to Impa, and she's going to walk you through how to find the Dragon Tear near a glyph. So you have to search all of the glyphs around Hyrule for a small water pool. It doesn't appear until you are next to it, so you have to walk around on the ground to find it. However, if you view the glyph from a height, you'll notice a yellowish tier location on the glyph, and that is where the pool is. Also, the dragon's tier location at the glyphs are always on a flat ground, so there's no need to search on a cliffside or a sloped surface. Look for the flat ground, and you're going to find that dragon's tier pool. So part of the Dragon Tears quest, you're going to go to the Forgotten Temple to search for Impa, and in there you'll find a room with a map indicating all of the locations for the glyphs across Hyrule. Impa marks the location of the Forgotten Temple on your map, so finding it won't be too much of a problem. So once you've made your way to the Forgotten Temple, head down and forward and you're going to find the map room, and once you've found it, take a photo and save it for later. It's going to make finding all the glyphs much easier. From this point, you can travel around Hyrule, unlock all the towers as you go, and when you're flying through the sky, you are going to see the glyphs. So if you don't want to travel around and you just want the locations, I've got you covered, don't worry. So here are all the Dragon's Tear locations, and I'll show the coordinates on the screen for a few seconds. And if you want to pause the guide, then you can look at these locations as a reference. And just remember, tier 12 only reveals itself once you've found the first 11. And once you find the 12th tier, you'll see the light dragon in the sky. And then you can use the sky tower to fly high above it, land on it, and get the master sword. Okay, that is your first option for getting the master sword. So next up, we're going to have a look at option two. And here, we're going to need to save the Deku Tree. So if you don't want to find all of the dragon tier locations, then there is a slightly faster way to get the Master Sword, and that is by saving the Deku Tree itself. So first of all, you want to get to Korok Forest, although getting there is slightly different to Breath of the Wild. Okay, first of all, how to get to Korok Forest. So rather than go through the Lost Woods to get to Korok Forest, you can go under the maze. So if you try to go through the Lost Woods to get to Korok Forest, the mist will just keep getting you, and you won't be able to get to the forest. What you want to do is go underground through the depths. 
There's a chasm very close to the Lost Woods called the Minshi Woods Chasm, and that is located at this location. So the coordinates are 1063 1655 0167, and you can also get there by going to the Eldon Canyon Skyview Tower. You can jump off the tower and then make your way to the Minshi Woods. Open up the map and place a marker on Korok Forest, which is at the center of the Lost Woods, and then you can use that marker to guide you when you're down in the depths. So when you've placed that marker, dive into the chasm and head towards the marker you just placed. Use bright bloom seeds to light up the depths to help you see where you're going, and avoid the gloom on the ground and climb the trees if necessary and jump from tree to tree. So you're looking for the Rico Nazm light route, so if you follow your marker placed on Korok Forest, that should take you directly to the light route. And also, be careful of enemies down there, particularly the gloom hands if they appear. So I jumped into the trees and waited for them to go away, and they didn't really bother me too much. But next to the Rinkanasm light route, there will be a concrete ceiling where you can ascend up to Korok Forest. Okay, next up we want to save the Deku tree, so Korok Forest isn't the bright and vibrant place we remember. It's dark and it's dank because there's something wrong with the Deku Tree and all the Koroks. So to save the Deku Tree, you're going to need to dive into the Deku Tree Chasm found under the Deku Tree itself and then battle against the Gloom and also Phantom Ganon. So before jumping down into the Chasm, I do recommend preparing as it is a reasonably tough fight depending on where you are in the game. So you want to fuse some weapons to make good blades to fight with you want to bring at least six bomb flowers or more if you can grab them, and you want to make meals to replenish your energy, and cooking with Sunderline also helps those gloom afflicted hearts. So when you're prepared, jump down into the Deku Tree Chasm. First of all, you're going to need to defeat the gloom hands, so take them out with bomb arrows by attaching bomb flowers to your arrows. If you shoot in the middle, you should be able to hit multiple hands at the same time, and that should take about five or six bomb arrows to kill them all. Well then, you have to face Phantom Ganon, and this is all about dodging, parrying, and flurry rushing Phantom Ganon. He'll rush towards you, raise his sword for a second and then strike, and you want to dodge out of the way using the jump button and get that perfect timing to get a flurry rush attack. This is going to cause the most damage, you can also parry, although I found the flurry rush was better for doing damage overall. Do this a few times, avoid the gloom and defeat Phantom Ganon, and you're going to remove the gloom from Korok Forest, save the Deku Tree, Plus also Phantom Ganon will drop a nice sword and also a really good bow. So once you've saved the Deku Tree, you'll get a nice cutscene with Link and Zelda in Korok Forest. And then the Deku Tree will mark the location of the Light Dragon on your map and you'll get the Recovering the Hero Sword quest. Now you've got a handy marker on your map telling you the location of the Master Sword. So all you need to do is head to the nearest Skyview Tower, shoot up into the sky and then jump on its back. We do have a third option for finding the Light Dragon, and that is simply looking up and finding it in the sky. So you don't need to get all of the Dragon's Tears or save the Deku Tree, you just need to find the Light Dragon in the sky. It is probably the fastest method of getting the Master Sword, but it is down to chance, and you do have to search the skies. So I didn't do this method, so I don't know how long it's going to take to search for that Light Dragon in the sky if you don't find all the Dragon's Tears or save the Deku Tree, but I do believe it is an option. Well, whatever the method for finding the Light Dragon, now we know where the Light Dragon is, let's have a look at getting the Master Sword from it. Okay, first of all, how to jump on the back of the Light Dragon, so whether you completed the Dragon's Tears quest, or you saved the Deku Tree, or you just found that Light Dragon in the sky, you want to jump on its back. I would recommend opening up all of the Skyview Towers as that is going to give you plenty of options of jumping on its back. You could make a flying machine from Zonai devices and jump on the dragon's back, but I would recommend locating the light dragon first, then using the closest Skyview Tower to shoot Link into the sky and then float down onto the dragon's back. Once you're on its back, you want to then make your way towards the head, and you can pick up the dragon shards along the way, which you can use later for fuse material. Okay, next up, let's have a look at how to pull the Master Sword. So now you've made it to the head of the dragon, you want to pull the Master Sword. So to do this, you need two full stamina wheels, and not stamina provided by meals or food. You have to have two proper stamina wheels. So if you need to respect Link, and that means converting hearts into stamina, or vice versa, 
then you can do this at the cursed statue under Lookout Landing. So make your way into the emergency bunker in the middle of Lookout Landing and into the Royal Hidden Passage at the back. The coordinates for the Royal Hidden Passage are minus 0253, 0132, 0008, and you want to blast your way through some rocks and the cursed statue is on the right after you get through the first boulders in the Royal Hidden Passage. And here you can swap hearts and stamina for a small fee. So once you've got two full stamina wheels and you're standing in front of the Master Sword on the head of the Light Dragon, it is time to pull the Master Sword. This is a great moment in any Zelda game, so enjoy it. And you've got to hold down the button for a few seconds to get the Master Sword. It's all fairly simple, but once you've done this, you get a great cutscene of Link pulling the sword that seals the darkness. And once you've got the Master Sword, head down to Hyrule and test it out. Well, let me know in the comments what you think about the quest for the Master Sword. And that is it for this guide for how to get the Master Sword in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And as always, thank you so much for watching or listening. For more Tears of the Kingdom content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to Triforce Times. Or you can check me out on Twitter at Triforce Times. Well, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, you can check out all the other Tears of the Kingdom content on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I'll see you soon.